Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of Dexter New Blood episode 10. This is the season one finale. Get your fire resistant suits on. Do whatever you need to do in order to prepare because we are coming with the blowtorches for this episode. Yeah, you guys are going to need to put your hard hats on because this finale was not it. And before everybody jumps into the comments and is kind of like, I love the finale. That's awesome if you ended up really enjoying sure. this finale. But for us and for some others out there, this really wasn't it. And if you're new to the channel, just so you guys are prepared for this video... <laughs> yeah. We're really big fans of the show. We're not sick of fans, so we're not just going to come on here and be like, everything is great. It was the best ever, no matter what yeah. they did. We're we're fans of the show. And as fans of the show, you know, if your fans aren't going to keep your shows <laughs> accountable for the mistakes that they've made or bad decisions that they made, then who is, right? We are. We are the fans. <laughs> you guys are the fans. Keep them accountable. This was bad. Like there, there we go. I'm just, this was bad. Like this, remember when the season eight finale was bad and everybody was like, oh, this is the show's redemption. This is the way in which that they can go back and make everything better and make us all feel so much happier mm -hmm. about what's going on here. Obvious spoiler coming in three, two, one, Dexter's dead. So you know what? You guys, I guess <laughs> you came up with a way that feels a little bit more definitive than the original finale. I mean, it makes sense that Dexter would die after all of this, but hey, guess what? You still managed to screw up basically everything else around it and create a big, messy firestorm of poo that we are going to sit poo here and right. discuss. <laughs> okay, but before we get into all of this, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> now that I've already <laughs> called it poo. Dexter is over, but we have a lot of other shows that we do cover here at the channel, including Power, Power Book 2. We yes. got that coming up today as well. So yeah, hit that subscribe button, stick with us. There's lots of other stuff going on at the channel. Okay. Okay, let's just get into sort of the meat of this, because this okay. is what everyone is sort of here to discuss, which is, as you said, Dexter is dead. And yes. I think that with the original, I mean, I am, we're huge fans of this. I'm such a huge fan of this. I had a Dexter birthday party <laughs> that yes. included drinks called the Bay Harbor Butcher that Matt made that was like a blue drink. <laughs> and then he would drop a little licorice bag at the bottom <laughs> of it. It was so good. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Anyways, let's talk about this. So okay. we've got to this ending here where Harrison realizes that Dexter has killed Logan and that Logan doesn't fit the code. Logan hasn't done anything wrong. Logan yeah. is someone that we've loved all season long. He's a great character. He's just kind of like a fun time guy. Yeah. He's just a really enjoyable character. So we've got Harrison then being like, wait, I thought we were basically like Batman and we only kill bad people. Yeah. And like, what are you doing kind of thing? And you need to turn yourself in. And the moment that that kind of came up where then Harrison was like, dude, I just want to feel normal. Like, you know, my mother's murdered. My stepmother is dead. You know, my father is you. <laughs> like, I just want to feel like a normal person. You need to turn yourself in. I actually was waiting for Dexter to then be like, hand me your phone and just call Angel and be like, this is where I am. Yeah and be like you want this is what you want i've already done you dirty you know 10 years ago when i just <laughs> abandoned you to give you a better life which yeah. is you know yeah i'm sure dexter thought he was giving him a better life but for harrison on the other side of it where it's like my mother was murdered i've been left with this woman who's my stepmother you know my father abandoned me that's what that feels like it's not oh my dad did what's best for me by <laughs> abandoning me yeah to then go on for 10 years and not kill any more people it's like couldn't you have done that with your son like i, I don't know man anyways that that finale is also not good no I seriously thought that that's what he was going to do. That he was going to be like, you know what? You do deserve better and you do deserve to feel normal. And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to call Angel. I already know he's on his way here. And I'm just going to turn myself in so that my son feels like he's also doing the right thing. He wants me to turn myself in. I love him. I'm going to do that. 
I would have been so much happier with this ending if they did something like that. Because if they did that, if they had Dexter call up Angel and ultimately find himself arrested and actually, you know, face some sort of justice for all the crimes, it would have signaled to me, okay, guess what? Dexter Morgan has actually legitimately learned something from his time with Harrison because I understand that Dexter being a serial killer is actually the worst thing about him. He's also kind of a prick. Like, let's just come out there and say that. Like, he's inherently, like, super selfish. Everything that he does, everything that he acts like in this final scene with Harrison, it's never about Harrison. It's about him. It's about his own needs, his own selfishness, and his own ego. And to me, it sort of shows, okay, guess what? My son is back, but that actually doesn't change anything about who I am or how I am willing to skirt the code in order to suit whatever I want. Like, he just came across like he had learned nothing from the entire season and then it's sort of like well then why did all of this matter it's like i enjoyed a good bit of new blood but instead of actually paying that off you guys are sort of doing the trick here where you pull the handkerchief and instead you're just like knocking things all over the place and nothing is as it was anymore yeah you've gone from harrison being like i just want things to be normal like yeah. i just want to have like a more normal type life to saying Okay, so this means you need to, you know, turn yourself in. You need to be arrested. He starts to walk away. Fine, then I will abandon you yeah. again is basically what's happened. So then you have Harrison pull up a gun. Yeah. I thought the idea was then to be like, no, you're going to turn yourself in. Yeah. For it to then turn into Harrison, I'm going to do you a solid. Do you want to be normal? This is how it's going to happen. You're going to murder your father your only living parent, you're going to murder me and then you're going to carry that for the rest of your life. You're welcome, son. I was just like, what is this? I don't understand. How is this the thing that's going to make Harrison feel better? He's, you know, and he's still underage. Yeah. So like, how does this, how does he think this is going to work out? So he's going to kill the only guardian he yeah. has, his father. His mother's also dead. His stepmother's dead. So he has no guardian. He's yeah. still underage. And then what? He's going to get in a truck and drive somewhere. <laughs> and what's going to happen to him? He's not of age to rent an apartment. So what happens? <laughs> you just you're going to go back into the system like I, no one has thought any of this out. Once again, Dexter, you selfish prick, instead of trying to do something that could actually, you know, I don't know, help your son, support your son in the future, you just didn't want to have to go down and face the death penalty, you didn't want to have to deal with all the headlines sort of out there where you would have to deal with that, handle that, endure the waiting game until you got the needle, and so with all of that in mind, you're like... Hey, son, how about I go ahead and traumatize you right quick? You see that gun that I got you? Shoot me. You know how to do it. It was so disturbing. Like, what are you doing? I also just didn't <laughs> believe that Harrison would kill him yeah. for multiple reasons. So, one, yes, we've seen him, you know, cut a kid. Okay, yeah. that is way different than killing somebody. We saw him break an arm. Yeah. Also way different than killing somebody. Then we saw him last episode with Dexter killing Kurt. He himself wasn't killing anybody. He was an observer of it. And it was really difficult on him. He ended up being like, I need a minute. I yeah. need to get out of here. So to then go from all of that to him being capable of murdering anybody... <laughs> was a leap then yeah. you add on top of it that it's his dad so he's going through abandonment issues he even said that he's like you're responsible for killing my mom which i was also like this is coming out of nowhere too like at the beginning of this episode you're you're petting chickens with your girlfriend and smiling <laughs> like you're where is yeah. this it hasn't really been around for the whole season all of a sudden it's all pouring out i'm like okay i'll give that the benefit of the doubt sometimes that yeah. happens but like, you've been looking to have a parent this whole time, you have a parent, and you're not really, you know, a murderer, you haven't murdered anyone, and the person you're going to murder is your only living parent. The connection just wasn't enough. The only part of that entire scene where I kind of sit back and look at it and be like, okay, that makes somewhat sense is Harrison basically saying that, you know, 
me and you, Dexter, we are not the same yes. because I think that did a great job of sort of like circumventing a lot of these past couple of episodes where we've all been sort of sucked into this idea that, hey, look, it's Dexter 2.0 without remembering, oh, yeah. Harrison, like you said, hasn't actually killed anyone, so I think they tackled that disillusion really well. But then yeah. to just go completely off the other end of it and have Harrison then bring up all of these things that are surprisingly immediately on his mind just because Dexter killed my guy Logan, which, by the way, I am immensely upset about. But at the same time, Logan is not that foundational character of Dexter. He's not actually that important. Okay, we also have to talk about this death of Logan. So okay. we had Dexter get arrested for, you know, all the stuff that happened yeah. with Matt Caldwell. So there was, his house got burned down. For some reason, he kept that rod <laughs> with the serial number on it in his house. We've seen him be messy all season. Yeah. And we do know that Dexter keeps trophies. But it was kind of strange that he would keep that in his house. Okay, but we'll let that go. So okay. the house is burned down. Angela's looking around. She picks up this evidence with no gloves on, puts it into the <laughs> evidence bag. Yeah. And right away is like, okay, you know, that means that Dexter's involved. It was so thin. Again, it's like, oh, someone burned down your house. But this was in your house. There's no connection to be like, well, if somebody burned down my house and then you found this magical evidence in my house, wouldn't you think that the person that burned down my house may have also put that evidence in my house? It was just really thin. Okay. I know this is going to surprise a lot of people out there, given that we've just railed on that Harrison Dexter nonsense for like seven or eight minutes. But I actually hated the Angela stuff more than the Harrison Dexter stuff, just because... Angela suddenly becoming super cop. Like, let's reflect for a moment here that for the majority of this season, she's wrestling with the case that she has been working on for the entirety of her career yeah. that she was never able to actually pin down, despite the fact that Kurt has the super creepy vibe that he has always been in Iron Lake, that he has a terrifying <laughs> compound that has cameras on the wall. And like, okay, Angela's never been able to figure that out. And yet, here she is piecing together the mystery of the Bay Harbor Butcher almost completely out of nowhere. Over the past few episodes, she manages to hit all these different points. She manages to really push Dexter to the point where he feels like he has to kill Logan and escape. How is Angela suddenly this good at her job? I'm not saying that Angela can't be good at her, but she suddenly being more perfect than anyone ever on this show. It drives me insane how rushed and messy this was. Yeah, especially since all of this really kicked off with her Googling a, <laughs> you know, a the ketamine, yeah. which is not the drug that Dexter ever used, and then it popping up the Bay Harbor Butcher, which is something that the whole fandom has been talking about for weeks since yeah. that came up. That's just kind of like, this wouldn't have even come up. He used a different drug. It wasn't <laughs> this drug. So what is happening here? And, you know, that's sort of what kicks all this off. And it's like, I get that she may have circled around yeah. the mat thing. Okay. And she got that together. Okay. Fine. Th fine. But she's not going to get together the Bay Harbor Butcher. It just, it, it was so thin. And I know that they wanted to bring in people like Angel and sort of, bring that all around and i was like okay when we got to the end where harrison was like you need to turn yourself in i was like okay this is where the payoff then is yeah. actually going to come he's the bay harbor butcher you know angela has figured it out angel knows about it he's on his way here's the pay off it's coming where then dexter was going to be like okay i'm going to go in for this stuff which is where we get to the logan of it all so yeah. he's arrested he's put into jail angela's showing him pictures of being like remember this guy i remember you know you work for miami metro so you've seen an autopsy before let me yeah. show you this picture of a guy who has no y incision he's not autopsied at all throws him in jail <laughs> yeah yeah then he decides that dixer is like i have to get out of here to see my son this is the internal monologue going on in his head yeah. he decides that he's going to attack logan to get out of jail to be with his son yeah it's not 
that he needs to get out of jail because Angel's coming for him, that he's mm -hmm. going to go to jail, he's going to get the needle, that his life is going to end, which is what I actually thought. He was like, I got to get out of here. If I don't get out of here, Angel's yeah. going to come in and take me away and I'm going to be separated from my son. It was, I just need to get to my son. And because it was an internal monologue, I would have liked to have actually heard some panic about Angel coming to get him because that's, to me, really what it was. It wasn't like a, oh man, my son needs me. I got to yeah. be with my son. The the character of Dexter feels really inconsistent in this finale because you hear him say things about how he cares about Harrison or how he wants to reunite with Harrison and all this other stuff. But then his actions really kind of pan out that that's not really what he actually wants. So what's the point of us oh hearing God. this? Dexter is such an unreliable narrator in this finale. And I think at times the writers are trying to make him into something that fundamentally he's not. We've all heard the phrases, actions speak louder than words. <laughs> and Dexter's actions are screaming I'm going to tell you, I don't really care. I just need to get the bleep out of here. Those are the actions. The words are nonsense. The other thing that just that whole scene, I was just sitting back being like, why would he yeah. attack Logan at all? Let alone, you know, he ends up in this situation where Logan pulls a gun and he feels like he's got to kill him. It's just like, you had plausible deniability this whole time. There was mm -hmm. no real evidence that was sticking to you. Why didn't you just say lawyer and get me <laughs> out of here? Now you've actually killed a cop. So now there's no plausible deniability anymore. You actually committed the crime. You were the only person there. It's you. Like this other stuff you might have been able to get away with. Even Angela kind of said, ah, you might get away with this, you know, Matt Caldwell thing. Maybe. But you won't get away with the Bay Harbor Butcher. And it's kind of like, well, he has for 10 years. Yeah. Just because he's not actually dead and Dexter Morgan's actually out there doesn't necessarily mean that Angel has enough to put him away. I'm going to rewind for a second just to the very beginning of Angela arresting Dexter in the first place. Because this is where, to me, all of this stuff like immediately falls apart. And I don't know why Dexter didn't even really think that much about this. Angela's his girlfriend. Don't you think that in like a court of law, mm -hmm. in addition to all the circumstantial evidence that seems to be out there, that Dexter's lawyer could argue... This person has a very emotional attachment. She is mm -hmm. acting out of emotion because mm -hmm. of this prior relationship. Correct. Not only could this destroy, fundamentally, the Matt Caldwell case, it really puts further into question everything with the Bay Harbor Butcher because not only would they have to prove that Dexter is the Bay Harbor Butcher, which, you know, all circumstances right now, you would also have to disprove that Dokes wasn't the Bay Harbor Butcher. And then you're getting into like 10 years ago and looking at all this evidence. How are you going to unearth stuff from that long ago, especially when a lot of key players like LaGuerta are dead? Yeah, they were only going to be able to hold Dexter for so long. Like yeah. he... There, there isn't enough. A lot of it is circumstantial. Like, yeah, Angel could have come down there and wanted to bring him back to Florida, but we don't know that he could have. Like, I know Dexter probably didn't call a lawyer because Dexter has always thought that he's just smarter than yeah. everyone. He's the smartest guy in the room. He can get out of anything. He has gotten out of everything. So, you know, what's different about this time? But it did feel like we were finally in a situation where it was like, all this stuff is still really thin. So a couple of guys have a needle mark in this town and now all of a sudden that's enough to connect them. It's not. And, you know, this again, the stuff with Matt Caldwell, it's not. Someone burned down his house. Like, why wouldn't there also be magical evidence put there? It's all just seems like they really just wanted to wrap up this story as fast as humanly possible and they didn't have the time or the space or the execution or even the reasoning to make sense yeah. with a lot of it. That's my problem is they could have had another full season yeah. of this and it's still to me Harrison picking up the gun and then deciding instead of taking him in that he's all of a sudden going to kill him because Dexter's like yeah, remove the safety right here, son. I'm just like, <laughs> there is no way that he's going to pull that trigger after losing all these parents that now all of a sudden he's going to like decide to do this because his dad's like, you know, right here, son. It's it's okay, son. It's just like, no, like Harrison knows it's not okay. 
that's why at the end when he's driving yeah. away and he's got this smile on his face i'm like that wouldn't be a no, thing no. that's not helping him move on i will say here one thing that i did like about the finale of pump your brakes everybody this is here's here's some praise I love David Zayas. I'm so happy David yeah, Zayas came back for like two minutes and not that I necessarily think the Bay Harbor Butcher stuff made any sense at all. I just love that Masuka's getting married. And yes. apparently, can we have a limited series that's just Masuka's <laughs> wedding? Which, by the way, oh, God. <laughs> Vince Masuka does not age well in 2022. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't think Masuka would still be on the job in Miami Metro in 2022. No, it was a really cool easter egg to sort of have angel bring up his emails and to sort of see some of the other stuff that was going on in there and yeah he's still in touch with people still working with people stuff like that is still happening yeah. in his life it was cool to see he still had you know the file on maria sitting in his desk yeah. like it was that stuff paid off it did yeah. But then after seeing that stuff and sort of seeing Masuka's name and yeah. the file and even when stuff was running through Dexter's head before Harrison shot him where he was like thinking about all the people that yeah. he wronged and killed and Dokes is in there and everybody's <laughs> yeah. in there that it's kind of like the payoff for me was not there. It For me, this is, you know, may not be for everybody. It needed to be angel it really needed to be somebody in miami metro who's going to come out and full circle this the other really wonderful thing that could have been done in doing this whole full circle stuff is that we all know <laughs> that there's probably a lot of discussions right now about continuing this series in some shape or form maybe a harrison spinoff and we can dive more into that but if if they had decided okay we want to do that isn't it so much more viable if Dexter is technically still alive somewhere? Because you don't go straight to, you know, getting the lethal injection, like, minutes after you get arrested. Like, no. they could have still created a little bit of interesting story down the road there where Harrison visits Dexter. Or maybe we hear about Dexter. Or even, you know, God knows, maybe Dexter escapes. I don't know. But you, in killing him in this point, not only do you deprive us of actual proper justice for everything that he did... You also really pigeonhole yourselves, guys. He, Michael C. Hall was right there. You could have still used him for something. And instead, no. No, that's the thing is, uh, you know, there's apparently some big announcement coming out next week about, I guess, this. And I think we've all thought that there's going to be a Harrison spinoff. I mean, this is called Dexter New Blood. Yeah. New Blood is obviously Harrison. So we've seen him going on his trip and all this sort of stuff. I think it could have made for a much meatier story yeah. for him that no, it doesn't matter where he goes. His father's on trial. His father's in jail. His father's the Bay Harbor Butcher. It's, it's a lot that could be weighing on him as well. The other thing, and this is, and this part of it isn't solely Dexter Newblood's fault because, you know, they can't necessarily look at everything else that's out there, but I do feel kind of uncomfortable that this ending feels way too similar to Power to me. And spoiler alert, the Power, everyone, but you had a main character immersed in criminality who gets killed by their own son, and then it looks like there's going to be a spinoff out there about the son that's coming a little bit later on down the road, and it's just like... We've already had this particular story, and I think this time... And we're covering that story here <laughs> at the channel. It's called Power Book 2. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Power Book 2 is a fun show, and may maybe the Dexter New Blood with Harrison will actually end up being okay on some level, but it just feels like such a missed opportunity with how they could have continued this story with him to do it this way because this ending's just bad it just is there's no there's no joy or excitement in a harrison show because like you said there's just a lot of questions that just don't make sense with it yeah like the question of angela deciding to let him go i was like okay she she shows up there and she's like you know harrison's like all right arrest me and she's like no here's some money you know yeah. go and then he's like can you say goodbye to audrey for me no i can't i haven't seen you in the forest that's filled with cameras we saw this <laughs> yeah. earlier in the show and we saw it earlier in this episode specifically yeah. that there are cameras in yeah. this Forest. There was just so many problems with this. And I know it sounds like we're railing on this. It's because we are. I was about and, to say. and if you liked it, I'm glad that you did. But like I really did not. And I, you know, I didn't like the original either. I thought it was bare like a very selfish move. 
that Dexter decided to, you know, abandon his son with, with a woman that he didn't really know that well. He had been yeah. with her for one season. So he just left his son to go off and have a new life. And this new life didn't include killing. So he could have had his son. Here's the worst thing about all of this to me right now is that all of season eight for Dexter sucked. Like, I'm just going to say that. I hated pretty much all of season eight. So going into the season eight finale... I had zero expectation that it was going to be all that great. Here, I thought the first half of Dexter New Blood in particular was really, really good. And there was a lot that I liked about yeah, it. Like I even like these past few episodes. I, you know, last week's episode there were a lot of problems, but like in general, I thought we were moving in this really great, interesting direction for most of this season. So they really got my hopes up. And even when Batista shows up and they give us this like big hug of nostalgia, they got my hopes up yet again. Clyde Phillips, you will not do this to me again. Like if you do the next show, I will not get my hopes up because you may break my heart. I know you're not responsible for the season eight finale, but you're responsible for this. No, it's true. And th the comments online, man, they're not nice. I've seen some people that do like this finale, but it is pretty few and yeah. far between. Okay, well... We're going to go and try to calm down now because this finale has made us gravely upset. It is early in the morning. I am considering drinking. And so with that in mind. Don't we worry. Will, that's not going to happen. We will do I need an intervention for my Dexter rage. But no. Okay. We'll have some eggs instead. Eggs. That's better. That's happier. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching, for going through all of our Dexter coverage. Check out our Power Book 2 coverage. We also did all of Cobra Guy. Yes. And we will see you guys next time.